You guys know that I don't keep any secrets on my stream. That's literally why I started this YouTube channel. So I can show you guys everything about how my stream is set up. And then you can get some inspiration, go away and create something unique for your own stream. Or, you know, you could just straight up rip off my stream. Thief. One of the things that I use to create my advanced stream layouts in OBS are plugins. And basically what a plugin does is it adds extra features to OBS that it doesn't have by default. I want to show you guys five of the plugins that I use to create some of the effects that you're seeing on screen right now. Now, if you aren't aware, I've already done a video on five OBS plugins. You can check it out by clicking on the, the eye thing or wherever it is nowadays. For reference, here are the five plugins that we covered in that video, but today we're going to be looking at five more plugins. Now, as you're watching this video, you may have seen some of these plugins before, maybe you haven't, but come on, man. It's like really hard to make original content on YouTube, dude. I'm going to be focusing on plugins that I personally think add a lot of value to your stream and just make your stream more fun and engaging. Hey. What's up, guys? It's Nutty. Before we talk about OBS plugins, I want to address one thing. No, Gavin, these do not work in Streamlabs OBS, so don't ask me. Now, if you want to browse a list of every single plugin currently available for OBS, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. You can browse through the list. There's a few pages of them. The process of installing each plugin usually varies depending on who made the plugin, but generally speaking, you usually download a zip file. You go to where your OBS install is, and then you just unzip the zip file right on top. The zip file will usually contain a data folder and an OBS plugins folder, which match the root folder of your OBS install. So all you need to do is merge those folders and then relaunch OBS. That is the basics out of the way. Let's move on to the list. We're going to hit it off with my all time favorite plugin. Actually, are we? Maybe I should leave this one to the end. That way people have to watch my video longer. Dude, that would have been way smarter. Screw it. I'm just going to do it right now. The plugin is called Move Transition. Now, shout out to the random dude who left a YouTube comment. He's the guy who made this, and I would never have even known about this plugin if he didn't tell me about it. Now, you're probably aware that in OBS, you can set up a bunch of different transitions so that when you switch between scenes, you can have like a boring cut transition or fade transition. Or if you're fancy, you probably set up a custom stinger transition, which I made a tutorial for. Go check that out. But what if you wanted to animate your scene transition? So let's just say you have two scenes, one that you have your big camera and then another where you have your small camera. And when you switch between them, you want to animate your camera so that shrinks down. That's what move transition does. It just adds a new option in your scene transitions menu called the move. And then every single time that you switch between scenes, it will animate every single source in your scene composition. Okay, time out, Nadi. I've already seen this before. You covered that in your first video. First of all, watch your language. Second of all, kind of see the plugin that was in the first video was a different plugin called the motion effect and it kind of does pretty much the same thing but check this out i'm going to play a transition that used motion effect then i'm going to play a transition that uses this new move transition plugin and you can just see how much smoother this new plugin is than the old one so how do we set this up first go to your scene transitions click the plus button and you'll see a new option there called move from there the properties menu will open up and then you can change some of the properties you can change the position in and the position out options that's just going to tell the plugin where each source animates from i like to set the position in and position out to none i just think that looks better you'll see what i mean when you try it out and then you could also adjust the curve property again i like to just leave this at zero but play around with it see what works for you after that you can just press ok and then you can start switching scenes and damn dude look at that look how pro your stream looks now now some of you may be thinking if move transition is so much better than motion effect do i still need motion effect and the answer is maybe motion effect still has some features that move transition doesn't have. Like, for example, you can animate individual sources if you want to. So if you just wanted to hit a hotkey and only move just your camera, you'd have to use motion effect for that. So that's a feature that I'd like to see come to move transition. But for now, you can use motion effect. OK, don't listen to that guy. He has no idea what he's talking about. I filmed this video like three weeks ago. And apparently they've put out an update since then that allows you to animate individual sources. So go get that update. Also, some of the menus that I just showed you are going to look different. But I don't really feel like re-recording the video. Because like, what, what are you crazy? You expect me to put effort in this video? Okay, next plugin. This is going to be for anyone that uses background music 
from something like Spotify, which I'm guessing is a lot of you. Have you ever found music from Monster Cat on YouTube and it's got that cool little visualizer thing that animates as the music plays? Like, that's cool. I want that. Yeah, that's pretty much what this plugin does. It's called Spectralizer. Now, this one's pretty easy to set up. There's going to be a new option when you're adding a new source in OBS called Audio Visualizer. And then once you have it added, you just select the audio source where your background music is coming from and it pretty much just works right away. Now there are options you can play around with, like you can change like how high the bars go, how many bars there are, and how thick the bars are, but I'll let you guys play around with it and figure it out for yourself. Now here's the thing, a lot of you guys are gonna see this audio visualizer plugin, and then you're just gonna copy exactly the same thing that they do in the Monster Cat videos. And that's cool if you wanna do that, but I highly recommend that you play around with it and try to think of clever ways that you can use this plugin like for example, I use this on my starting soon screen and I have two copies of this audio visualizer mirrored and I've lowered the opacity and just put it in the background so it's a little more subtle and not so in your face. Or you can do what this guy did. He's got like this tiny widget that shows his local time in his time zone, but on top and bottom of this widget, he's got two copies of the audio visualizer plugin and then he set it to react to his voice. So every time he speaks, the visualizer moves. So I, I just thought that was a really clever way of using this very simple plugin. But whatever you do, just try to think of something creative. Don't put like these gigantic obnoxious bars over your stream. Like we get it, man. You still think beatboxing is cool. Just chill out, homie. <laughs> All right, so the next plugin. This one is so underrated, but it is so powerful, and it is called OBS Shader Filter. Basically, what this plugin does is it adds a new filter that you can add to any source and apply shaders to it. Now, if you don't know what a shader is, you can think of it like an effect that you can apply to your camera or your game or literally anything. Like, for example, you can make it look like there's a piece of glass between you and your camera, or you can make it look like your camera's pixelated, like an old 16-bit SNES game, or you can even set like a source to rotate which is something you can't even do in OBS. You can even create your own shader but I'm guessing if you knew how to do that you already know about this plugin. Now all you have to do to apply a shader to a source is you just go to the filters for any source that you want, add a user defined shader and then click the checkbox that says load shader text from file. From there you can browse a list of all of the pre-installed shaders Try each one. A lot of them don't work, but just try each of them. There's a lot of really cool ones in there. Now, using each of these shaders on their own might seem gimmicky, and I get that, but hear me out because trust me, this plugin opens up so many doors to creative and unique fun ideas that are just going to make your chat think, how did he do that? Here's an example that I use in my stream. I've added a plugin called Zoom Blur, and basically all that does is it makes my camera pulse in and out, and that's it's all right, it's okay on its own, but check this out. On top of that, I added these party lights, then I chucked on these anime speed lines and put on some Wii music in the background. Then I set it up using last week's video, check that out. I set it up so that every time I get a host, it does this. So the last video I did was on RTX voice, and yeah, you don't need an RTX start for it. What? <laughs> but that is just a taste of what you can do using shaders. I actually have some really insane ideas that involve combining shaders with an upcoming feature coming to RTX graphics cards that literally no one is talking about. I'm going to have to save for another video because I'm just exploding with ideas right now. Keep an eye out for that because trust me, it's going to be crazy. Okay, what are you up to? Plugin number four. This next plugin is called Closed Captioning. And as the name suggests, yeah, it adds captions to your stream. Look, I get it. Did anyone ask for this? No, I've never had any deaf people watch my stream or anyone ask for captions except for one person. You know who you are. There are a lot of ways to add captions to a stream. There are websites that can do it. There are Twitch extensions that can do it. But did you know that the Twitch player itself natively supports captions? It's just that when you stream using OBS, you're not sending any of that data over to show the captions on your stream. That is exactly what this plugin does and it works off the Google Speech API. So it's gonna be about as accurate as when you talk to your phone or use Google Home. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Nutty, my Google Home never understands what I'm saying. Won't this be just as bad? You're goddamn right it is. Yeah, it does make a lot of mistakes and I could sit here and lie to you like, hey, this is gonna make your stream more accessible to people who can, you know, hear your stream. but. I gotta be real, the only reason why I added this is because sometimes it's fun to have captions there and then laugh at the mistakes that it makes. Like this. 
Who's Catherine? I don't know any Catherines. Just one thing to add, because the captions work natively with the Twitch player, your viewers can just turn off the captions if they think it's annoying. So no harm done there. This last plugin is going to be more of a convenience thing and not really something that your viewers are going to be able to see. If you're the kind of person who takes a lot of screenshots, maybe you're an artist or you just want to capture a small portion of your screen, check out Scrab. Basically, it adds a new hotkey to your settings that says capture screenshot. And when you hit that hotkey, it's going to bring up this region selector and then you can just highlight a region on your monitor and then hit enter and it'll automatically add a new image source to the current scene in OBS. And then from there, you can treat it as a normal image source so you can just zoom into it if you want or delete it if you just wanna add it temporarily. What I think this would be really useful for is if you're doing like React content and you see something funny that is really small, you can like take a quick screenshot of it and then zoom into it so your chat can see it better. I don't know. If this is something that's gonna be useful for you, then you'll know. Get that out of here. So those are five plugins that you can install today, as well as the other five plugins I did in the other video. Make sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know which plugins that you're using for your stream. I gotta be honest with you. I would really like to do another top five video for OBS plugins, but I've pretty much gone through every plugin that I use. So if there's anything I've missed, anything that might be super cool that I could do a video on, let me know. I'd love to try it out. I love testing new things and playing with new things and just trying to make my stream like take it to like the next level if you guys would like to talk to other people who are looking to upgrade their stream make your stream look dope and fantastic and all that stuff check out the discord link down below also what was i supposed to say oh yeah that's right i have a twitch stream i stream four nights a week there's a link down below for that as well if you want to ask me any questions you want we are always talking about streaming stuff and we're in just chatting so i love answering questions live i don't know how to end videos